Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 123 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies like me and knife junkies like you to learn everything about knives and knife collecting. And it's our midweek supplemental show where we dive deep into the weeds, if you will, and talk knives. First off, we're going to kind of cover several different subjects. Of course, this past Sunday was Father's Day, so we have to learn what uh, maybe Bob got or Bob gave for Father's Day to his dad. We'll talk about that. Also, uh, Bob not only does videos and audio, but he can write as well. So we're going to talk about a (laughs) Bob DeMarco article. Also coming up in uh, Knife Life News, we want to talk about the new giant mouse, Ace Grand? Is that what it's called? That's right. It's the Ace Grand. You had me at giant mouse. I was thinking, (laughs) ooh, what? Okay. Steel Wheel, back in the news, we're going to talk about that, as well as ZT, their new 0707, as well as uh, Tops. We're also going to kind of touch on a little something with Tops and the Knife Life News. And, of course, in uh, Bob's State of the Collection, we're going to talk about some borrowed knives this week that uh, maybe we'll see reviews on and uh, commentary about. So, episode number 123, a lot of knife stuff to talk about. And, Bob, we are uh, still on a high, man, coming off this past Saturdays, which was June 20th, Knife Town Hall, where you had two special uh, guest interviews on the YouTube channel. Yeah, that's right. We had Andrew Demko and we had Greg Lightfoot. Uh, and it was about a two and a half hour show. Uh, Andrew Demko came on first and he was on for about an hour and 15 minutes talking, getting in the weeds and showing off the shark lock and really yeah. showing how it works. And what I really loved was he showed off a bunch of prototypes, a bunch of um, uh, failed designs, if you will, or designs that he created. He learned way. from. Yes, exactly. On the way to the the current shark lock, which is his new and patented lock, uh, which is appearing on the AD20, his new custom model. So it was really beautiful. Yeah, what I loved, and you, you touched on it, was he was showing all those knives, The as you said, the learning uh, opportunities are the ones that were on the way. Just really, you know, right up on the camera, you could see the detail and everything. That's what makes these um, like Thursday night knives and these live knife town halls so special. Not only is it the audio and the conversation, but the video just kind of pulling it all together. Yeah, and for someone like that, uh, Andrew Demko, he's a he's a legend in this industry because of his innovation. Four locks, he's innovated four locks: the Ram Safe, the uh, the legendary Triad, the Scorpion Lock that you see on the AD15, and now the Shark Lock, and all patented, which to me is also pretty cool. It's not just uh, yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, great to great to have him on and great to really see inside the mind of an innovator like that. And then to offer the opportunity for people to, to speak yeah. up. My my brother commented, yeah. my brother's a big fan of Andrew Demko and he, he got a chance to, uh, to let him know that. And then a lot of really great questions from uh, from knife junkies who wanted to know specifics in particular. Right. They were asking so many questions, you couldn't get your questions in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, exactly. no, wait, I want to ask my question. I have had my opportunities on two different podcasts. And, and one, of the, one of the cool things that you saw through those different prototypes is something he's described in both of those interviews is this uh, mm-hmm. painstaking process. Like, uh, oh, maybe I'll just take a tiny hair off of this piece of titanium. And then he goes through the whole process and that tiny hair doesn't work and he needs to take a tiny hair more off. And so... Right. You know, the process continues. So it was cool to see the evidence of that. And then we had Greg Lightfoot, and uh, he was up for an hour or so also. And again, so we have a legend from this uh, this industry, someone who's been around for 30 years, uh, making folding tactical knives and uh, bushcraft and all sorts of knives. You know, he's a man of adventure who makes knives for many different purposes, but uh, he's really known for his folders. And uh, they've gotten, they've gone from the tactical, practical, uh, cool in the early days to just beefy, ornate, gorgeous, uh, handmade works of you know usable art. And the same thing, we got uh, commentary from from uh, a lot of our our usual suspects, our great friends of the show, uh, asking them questions about uh, design choices, asking them questions about process and 
um, historical materials. questions and materials. Yeah, it was really, uh, these are questions I did not think to ask. Uh, and that's why these kind of town hall formats or the Thursday Night Knives format is so excellent uh, because we, it's a collaborative process. And yeah. we, we get to find out the most information that way. And if you uh, ever see the uh, town hall, um, you know, advertisements, things that we put out, please do make your uh, best effort to join us live because you'll get the chance to interact uh, with the makers, the manufacturers, or the viewers, whoever the guest or guests are on either Thursday Night Knives or the special Knife Town Halls. So a couple of uh, things I want to mention is uh, if you weren't able to join us for the Knife Town Hall Live, you can catch it on replay on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. That's thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. But if you'll make sure that you are subscribed to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel, and be sure to click that little bell. That way you'll get notified anytime the Knife Junkie goes live so you don't miss these opportunities to interact with the makers and the manufacturers, those type of things, because you don't want to miss this opportunity for that live interaction. Yeah, you can watch it on replay, but I think the, the real value here is that that interaction that you're getting to ask the questions in chat, but also actually come on the show face-to-face, -face, you know, see your knife maker friend, your hero, someone that you want to ask a question to, or maybe even show off one of his knives that you own. So, yeah. you know, th that's a great opportunity. Yeah, and uh, this is not the place to be shy, A. <laughs> we, we know you're into it. And C, we know you have an iPhone or or the like. So yeah, uh, it's got a camera. Pop on, say hi, show us, ask us, uh, ask the question, and then you're gone. You don't have yeah. to stay on for some big commitment. Yeah, and it, like Bob said, you don't have to have uh, expensive technology and equipment to join. Uh, even if all you have is a smartphone, it's got a camera, and it's got a great camera. So all you can do is just uh, join from that uh, that iPhone and, and pop in, as Bob says, ask your question, and pop back out and listen to the rest of it. Hey, Bob, a belated happy Father's Day to you. That was uh, this you. past uh, past Sunday. You've got a couple of, uh, couple of girls, so uh, your dad, I don't know if... Uh, you have anything that uh, they got for you for Father's Day, or maybe you want to talk about uh, maybe something you gave your dad for Father's Day? I, I will indeed, but also I have to extend a happy Father's Day to you. You are also a father of two, yeah. and uh, man, what a great day it is just to just to be lavished. Uh, my kids carried me around uh, in a palanquin all day, and they were and they were they were um, fanning me with palm fronds and singing to me. It was it was it was wonderful. Uh, they did not, however, get me a knife, but that's fine. That's fine. You know, that's, that's low hanging fruit. I, I find it hard to believe that they actually carried you around. Well, that, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. A team they are, of people. They are little girls. <laughs> yes, that is true. Okay. They, they were not, none of that happened. Right. But it was a lovely day nonetheless. But they did treat you right. <laughs> they did indeed. Uh, and I treated my dad right. Uh, I got him, um, I, I just think this was perfect for him. So my dad is the first one who got me enthusiastic about samurai swords because mm. uh, and, and and Japanese blades. Uh, I remember back in the eighties, uh, kind of pilfering his bookshelf and coming across a. Um, he had a book from Sotheby's, the uh, uh, the the auction house mm -hmm. in New York, and it was full of uh, Japanese blades from various Ooh, wow. uh, various time periods, various uh, shogunates, I guess. And uh, so these were legit samurai swords that were tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Wow. And uh, he just kind of thought it would be cool to have. I don't think he was seriously even imagining, you know, purchasing these. Uh, but I remember him showing these off to me. And uh, he's always had a thing for the, for Japanese blades. And recently, uh, I've been getting him slip joints over the past few years. And he loves that aesthetic, too. So what did I get? A slip joint samurai. No, close. <laughs> I got the new Benchmade Tengu for my father, which oh, is yeah. the which is the traditional looking uh, Tanto flipper, and uh, it is just a beautiful looking thing. It's it's a classy gentlemanly knife. It doesn't have a clip. It comes in a little leather pouch and everything. Uh, but uh, I right up my dad's alley, and uh, and I'm 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 thinking he's digging it. I'm sure we'll uh, hear more when uh, we. Uh... Get your dad back on the podcast for uh, some of his uh, knife stories. We've done that, uh, I think, once in the past, and uh, uh, some folks commented that they really liked it. So uh, yeah. get him back on and uh, tell an inside story about uh, going on a trip and looking for a knife for you or, or some <laughs> other kind of inside uh, inside scoop there. 
You mentioned knives and the Tengu, of course, one of the featured knives that we have on our Knives for Sale page. That's at thenifejunkie.com slash knives, thenifejunkie.com slash knives. We try to keep that page up to date with a lot of the newest things and some of the things on sale from uh, some of the manufacturers that we have relationships with. So thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Kind of tease it at the beginning. Bob not only does audio and video, but he writes as well. And congratulations, Bob. You had uh, an article that uh, mm-hmm. is featured in Knives Illustrated. Yes, my first uh, article in Knives Illustrated. Very proud of it. Uh, it's about the Cold Steel XL folders. And uh, the premise is basically they might look big and ridiculous, and they might look like big murdery weapons, but they also... Uh, happen to be actually very, very practical and excellent knives for, for real world use, uh, I, you know, out, outside of the, uh, of the knife fight, if you will. Uh, and, uh, I think I make a good argument and, uh, have some pictures up there and, and, and it was run through the, uh, run through the, the editing hands of Brian Ball. You know, Miss Lacey Dicey on YouTube mm-hmm. is the mm-hmm. editor of Knives Illustrated. And uh, I'm very grateful he brought me on to do that article, and he's uh, I'm, gonna, I'm writing another one currently uh, for the next issue. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really cool to go to Knives Illustrated and see my photograph, not the photograph of me, but that I took of right. my Cold Steel XL folders right on the right. front. And then I saw my name in lights, Bob Marco. Well, it wasn't in lights, but it was in print right. on my screen. So That's right. It was right there. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That was kind of cool. And what, uh, you know, briefly looking at the article, what I liked was the uh, the picture of your uh, case, your uh, like mm-hmm. tool case, but it was just a drawer full of all these knives right there together. Uh, to me, that was, I, I like that picture the best. It's like a family portrait. It's heartwarming. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's heartwarming. <laughs> uh, I have to take a moment. I lost, I lost my breath there. <laughs> But, yeah, visit our uh, friends at Knives Illustrated, if you will. If you're not yet subscribed, that's a great publication to uh, to make sure that you are subscribed to. So, Knives Illustrated. And not for nothing, Jim, it'll be interesting to see the editorial shift it, it makes under Slicey's, uh, uh, Slice, with Slicey at the helm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting thought there, yeah. Uh, if you uh, after you uh, get that uh, Knives Illustrated and you read that article, uh, if you have any thoughts you want to share with Bob, shoot him an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com or better yet, call the listener line at 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487 and uh, give him some thoughts. Did you agree with everything he said or have a differing point of view or maybe just uh, add some commentary to the article? We would definitely love to hear from you. All right, Bob, before we go to our Knife Life News segment, where we uh, kind of dive into some of the product drops and knives, uh, uh, knife news uh, in the news <laughs> this week, if I can speak, uh, we want to say thank you. Um, yeah. We This uh, past Thursday night on Thursday Night Knives, uh, we almost had a, a bidding war, if you will, folks, uh, supporting the YouTube channel, supporting you with uh, Super Chats. If you're not familiar with Super Chats, that's the way you can give money through the YouTube uh, platform uh, in the chat format. You you give a certain amount of money and uh, just had great support from the community and yeah. uh, want to say thank you. Yeah, I was so um, humbled and flattered and, and excited. Uh, you know, at, when we're doing Thursday Night Knives, it, the, my mood is elevated. Your mood is elevated anyway. I was, I'm so happy to just be doing bloviating a about <laughs> knives. <laughs> exactly. Being, yeah, right, right. Just, just bloviating about knives and people listening and actually conversing with me about it. I'm not just out in the dark babbling knives like usual. Uh, and, uh, I was just so touched. Humbled. Yeah. Touched. Lavender pants, 86, slicey dicey, Alex's knife box. OCD for EDC, James Moore, Hilltop Knives and Gear, they all gave in Super Chat. And uh, uh, and and a couple of them multiple times, Lavender Pants, Alex, and uh, OCD for EDC. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, they were starting, like you said, they were starting to one-up one another. And I'm right. like, oh, shucks, guys. Not <laughs> over me, but, uh, you know, if you must. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, very excited, very, um, very uh, happy about that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I... I... Touched, tumbled, you know, honored. I think all of those words, you can't say enough. It definitely was uh, was that. Um, you know, I, I know we put a lot of time and effort into the podcast, Thursday Night Knives, the town halls, you know, a lot of uh, personal expenses that we shell out of the pocket for 
web hosting and uh, the tools we use to put on everything. So it's it's nice to see. I think for me that just knowing that people see value and, and yeah. appreciate it. That they would exchange dollars for for what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so definitely. Well, speaking along that, and I, you know, I don't want to be slimy or, you know, self promoty or whatever, kind of coming off as a huckster or whatever. But I, uh, I, while we're talking about this, I do want to mention you just created a Patreon. Oh, so, come on. That's not being sleazy. Okay. Yes. yes I just created a Patreon uh, page and, and you can support the podcast, uh, support Thursday Night Knives or the channel, however, however you uh, prefer to look at it. Uh, but, you know, we bring you weekly content, and I figured we're a proven entity at this point. We've put out 123 podcasts, uh, and we've put out multiple. I don't even know how long we've been doing Thursday Night Knives, and I've put up a lot of videos. And I'm finally at the point where I'm like, yeah, I think I think uh, we can, in good conscience and fairly, ask if anyone feels like supporting. Here's an opportunity. Here's an avenue. Here's a place. So if you go to Patreon, go to the Night Junkie uh there are three different tiers of support. You can give three dollars a month, five dollars a month, or ten dollars a month, and each one of those uh, has has uh, different benefits to them. Uh, so, if you think what we're doing here is useful, if if there's a, any utility in this or any entertainment or joy that you get from this, and you feel like it's uh, worth worth paying a little bit every month, or uh, or if you can, that would be awesome. If yeah. not, just keep listening. That's yeah. all. Yeah, free of charge, no, no, no requirement to pay. But uh, if you want to show some love, hey, we'll yeah, be glad that's to how accept you can do it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, knifejunkie dot the knifejunkie dot com slash Patreon, the knifejunkie dot com slash Patreon. That is the address that you can find the Knife Junkies Patreon account at. And as Bob said, there are three, five, and ten dollar levels of support. At the $10 level, you're going to be entered into a monthly knife giveaway, so a drawing for a chance to win a knife that comes at the $10 a month level. So, uh, again, go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon if you want to help support the show. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So, Jim, earlier, you were a little vexed by the name Giant Mouse. Because when we think of mouse, we think of a little creature. Mm -hmm. But Giant Mouse is a uh, company that's been around for, I don't know, maybe three or four years at this point. And it's a joint venture between famed Danish knife makers slash designers, uh, Jens Anzo and Jesper Voxnes. We know them as Vox and Anzo. And together, well, let's just say apart, they're designing uh, and knife making phenoms. And together... They are giant mouse, and their their uh, aesthetics blend together beautifully. And uh, I've never had a giant mouse um, knife. I have uh, uh, sort of appreciated them from afar, but they're not wheelhouse knives for me. I, I generally like uh, a bigger knife, but they have this new Ace Grand coming out. And uh, the Ace moniker on a giant mouse knife, I believe, uh, is a sort of regular production knife because they also do limited runs of various knives. So this Ace Grand looks to me like the Vox F3. Uh, I have the Boker version of that. It's a beautiful um, clip point blade. Uh, and in this case, in the case of the Ace Grand, it's their largest knife, I believe. And uh, it has a, a 3.4 inch blade. It's got that sort of uh, Spyderco-esque deep carry wire loop over clip. It's got a gorgeous uh, green micarta handle with with liner lock and just a very very attractive uh, clip point blade. Now this is something that they're uh, that they've created and are sort of uh, marketing towards outdoors use. Uh, you know something that's supposed to be used outdoors and kind of hard used. Uh, a lot of the pictures you see of this, uh, you'll see leather gloved hands. You know carving a, a steak with it, or uh, and I don't mean a, a meat steak. I mean you know a, a tent steak. And uh, just a lot of sort of uh, outdoorsy images that come with it. So that's, I think, what they're intending this to be. So it's L-Max. It's got a high saber grind. And uh, and it's got a quite a nice-looking kind of stabby tip. It uh, looks a little bit nicer to me than the, uh, I shouldn't say nicer, a little bit more acute than the F3. So it looks like a beautiful knife. I, I see it is sold out at this point. I think it's, uh, it's something that people have gotten on pre-order. Mm. And um, 
you know, so I think they're the first batch is all out, but right. they'll be back. All of those Mises or Mices are sold. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? Uh, on, on second thought, you, you, sh- you shouldn't go by that. You should, you should dig around. Mm. I have not done extensive searching for it. Just some of the okay. usual places. Right. Okay. So giant mouse learn something here uh, every day on the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. Uh, moving on. Is it real steel or steel will? Oh, it's geez. Steel will. It, actually, which is it? It is steel will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, to, to those who, who, um, Take exception to that. I always mix them up. Yeah, I'm not calling too. them the same company, but right. I always mix them up. Right. And but they excite me about the same. And 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 I'll say that the Steel Wheel Sedge, which is a new one that they came out with, to me it's their version of the uh, Native Chief. It looks just like a Native Chief. It comes in a three and a half and four inch blade, which I like. I love that they're offering a, a full four inch blade. I think everyone should, uh, but that's just me. But I gotta say, Jim, man, this this knife it just looks just like the Native Chief to me, and it's in that same D two uh, G ten format that is great. And I mean, they really Steel Will is really makes a good knife. I'm not saying this is a bad knife. I'm just saying it's a just kind of another design in that format that's not quite doing it for me. To me, they're hit and miss. Like the last one, uh, the last Steel Will that got a lot of press, the Scylla. I thought was beautiful and really cool and innovative. Uh, this one uh, is just, you know, looks, if you like the design, no doubt it's going to be a, a very right. good and usable knife. Well, uh, interesting question. Uh, you say it looks just like the Chief? The S- Spyderco native, native, native Chief. Native Chief. Yeah. I, you know, I've been listening and, you know, working with you on this podcast for quite a while. And the question that comes in my mind every once in a while is, how many knife designs can you really have? I know. So, you know, is it, A, a is it not surprising that one life knife looks like another knife, even though they're designed or manufactured by different companies? A, a fair point you raise, and I, and, I, and I neglected to mention what the real inspiration for the design of this knife is. Hmm. Uh, it is not the Native Chief. I think it, it's incidental. Uh, this uh, sedge is a, is a type of grass. And hmm. so this blade, a very leaf-shaped blade, just like all spider coes and the native chief, a very leaf-shaped blade, is actually um, is is actually uh, inspired by a blade of grass. So, I, yeah, I think maybe you're right. Maybe that's an unfair assessment. We've been making knives for forty thousand years or something. I don't know. I'm no historian, but we've been making them for a, a, a damn long time. <laughs> and at some point, things will start to uh things yeah. will start to look similar. I mean, we mentioned this in in a podcast recently about how uh it might not be derivative like I'm like mm-hmm. I was kind of impugning this knife to be. It might just be in the same on right. the same shelf in the same category. Right. Long leaf-shaped blade. One other question before we carry on with the next uh, story in Knife Life News, got to go down a rabbit hole here. You mentioned blade length. Mm-hmm. Uh and we've talked about blade length all the time and you're a, uh, you know, certain blade length kind of guy that's yep. uh, in your collection. Um, a, a real knife newbie question here. Is it just as simple of measuring the blade, you know, from the visible part of the blade that you can see that determines how long it is? I think most people will will go from the tip of the blade to the most forward uh, part of the handle. Okay, so, the, uh, the visible part? Yes, okay. exactly. Where it yep. comes to the handle. Exactly. But the furthest out. So sometimes you'll get uh, on a really what I consider a really good design, you'll have a, a longer cutting edge than blade length because of how the handle curves forward and how the blade so runs more back blade, behind it. Blade coming up under the handle. Yes, exactly. Okay, so would you measure the blade length then from what the visible part of the blade is under that handle? Well, now quite often, yes, you'll you'll see a blade length and then a cutting edge length in oh, specs. Okay. Okay. Uh, because they, uh, especially uh, with choils, you know, you add a, you add a, uh, um, you could have a four inch blade like my Hinderer XM24s, but they both have finger choils, which reduces the cutting edge to three and a half inches hmm. or okay. something like that. Okay. All right. Um, but, but uh, just on a blade length thing, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I was thinking about it. Four inches is what is, is always my ideal folding blade length. And why? Because my first folding tactical knives were uh, the early cold steel knives and they were all four inch. And I think it's sort of like, you know, um, 
you grew up in the 80s, like I, I was a teenager in the 80s, and maybe some of my style is still stuck there, you know, or maybe I'm still wearing jeans like I did in my 30s, but I'm in mm. almost 50, you know, Let's so. hope not. You, <laughs> you know how you kind of get locked into a style? I think right. maybe my four-inch thing is just that. Well, I guess the, the moral of the story there is uh, be careful what knives you buy for your kid as he or she is growing up. Because that might be the uh, blade shape or style that they uh, want to collect as they uh, grow older. So, uh, don't buy them something goofy. <laughs> I, I agree. I cannot disagree. Let me put it that way. But still buy them something and get them started. Exactly. All right. Uh, ZT, a new 0707. Yes, yes. Something about the getting rid of the... Uh, lock bar lockup? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so lock bar lockup, that's a term I'm giving it, uh, but I think people probably know what I'm talking about. So this this new knife, if you look at it, it's beautiful. It's kind of, a, well, it's long and slender. Uh, it's sort of in the class, I, I would put it in the ZT class with the with the long Sinkovich knives, the 040, uh, 0450s and the 0460 series. It's sort of like that, long and, and sort of uh, uh, thin. It also has a blade shape much like all of the new uh, recent um, ZTs and Kershaws with the with the pronounced wedge and the sort of modern looking almost harpoon nature of it. So this thing is long and slender. Uh, and the problem I have and a lot of people have, especially if their hands are 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 bigger than mine, you know, is uh, when you have one of these slender knives, but they're flippers and they're frame locks, it's difficult to deploy them without adding pressure. Uh, with your stabilizing fingers, that is your, your, your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky against that lock bar, making it almost impossible to open because the detent is already tight and crisp so that when you flip the bar, the, the, the knife rockets out, right? You have a slender knife. You have very little room to keep your hands off of that lock. So they become very hard to open. The 0707 adds this, uh, adds this new mechanism. It's a second detent. They call it the TDS, the Tuned Detent System, uh, and and it it is supposed to eliminate that quirk of thin frame lock flippers. And I'm not sure how it does it, but it it reduces the pressure on the main detent. I guess it takes some of the pressure off of the main detent and allows you to still kind of uh, be ham fisted with it, if you will, and uh, and hold that lock bar down, but still be able to flip the thing open. Now uh, I've seen a few videos so far. And, uh, but I haven't heard much in the way of, uh, opinion on that, uh, mm. uh, on that TDS. Um, but it's a very lightweight knife. It's 2.3 ounces. I mean, that's, that's, that's yeah. really light. And it's yeah. a three and a half inch blade, uh, 20 CV as, as is their usual these days. So interesting uh, innovation. We'll see how it works. Well, it'll be interesting for, uh, either someone from ZT or some uh, of our listeners and, and viewers on Thursday Night Knives that, uh, maybe have gotten one. Come on Thursday Night Knives and uh, show it off and uh, tell us what you like about it and uh, kind of give us a, a preview there in video form on Thursday Night Knives. Yeah, so, that'd, be, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so if you're interested, shoot Bob an email at bob at com or uh, call the listener line at 724-466-4487 or what the heck, just show up on the Thursday Night Knives <laughs> exactly. and join the conversation. Exactly. And, 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 and let me know why I shouldn't buy the 0707 because, man, it does look tempting, Jim. Well, isn't that kind of your standard line for any knife, <laughs> why I shouldn't buy it as opposed to why I should buy yeah, it? Yeah, I think that, I think that's what it should be because yeah. let's just face it. Yeah. Why shouldn't I buy it? That's right. Coming off Father's Day this past weekend, uh, Father's Week, as we like to say, that, that's what I try to get away with, you know, with my kids. It's like, you know. Well, it's a week before Father's Day. Don't make me do that. You know, it's three <laughs> days after Father's Day. Where's my, you know, my cake or whatever? But uh, Tops has their uh, highly anticipated cigar cutter, which is kind of yeah. apropos for this time of year, if you will, thinking of yeah. dads and cigars. And well, I guess this this it's called the two hundred eight Clipper, and and this little sucker has been has been really uh, highly anticipated, but. It first came out in prototype, I think it was at SHOT Show, January uh, 2019. So, it's been two, wow. almost two years and people yeah. have been uh, anticipating it. What this thing looks like, it looks like a tiny friction folder version of their very first knife. The, what was that called? The Eagle. The Eagle. It, it has that very um, aggressive geometric handle and the super aggressive uh, American Tanto blade. Uh, but what what is this? This is a little two and a half inch 
friction folder. And a friction folder stays open, yes, by friction. Uh, they usually have an extended tang. The blade has an extended tang, and you sort of slowly uh, sweep it open like you would um, a front flipper, except you do it slowly. And then that extended tang locks and nestles tightly between the two handle slabs, and that's how it stays open. That and the pressure you put downward with your thumb on that tang. Um, that's what keeps a friction folder open. Why is this thing a friction folder? Well, you don't want to lock on it because it's a cigar cutter, and uh, you want it to be free in, in the path. So this, uh, this little Tanto blade, two and a half inch, is chisel ground, so that means one the one side has the bevel, so you look at it and it looks like a tanto. You flip it over, and the blade is completely flat, which you know just from listening. I, I love that. Uh, Emerson likes to do that. Uh, other companies like to do that. But the reason uh, this is flat and chisel ground is so that flat side of the blade marries up nicely to the flat side of the inside of the handle. Now, the handle has a hole on it just big enough to put a cigar tip through. And so you have a nice cleaning, shearing kind of scissor-like action with the chisel blade against uh, the flat handle scale. So this little thing looks really super cool. It's like a tiny little tactical cigar cutter, you know. And then, <laughs> and then when it's when it's, it's funny, closed, that's what it is. <laughs> that's right. And when it's but it looks so mean and aggressive. And yeah. when it's closed, uh, the protruding tang has a uh, has a, a bottle opener, you know, yeah. cap lifter on it. So. Man, how can you go wrong? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it here on the Tops and Hives uh, website, and the little uh, geometric uh, patterns on you know on the the handle, and as you said, the the bottle cap opener there on the end. And uh, according to their website, uh, at least as our time of our recording, it was still available. Uh, 184 dollars on the uh, the Tops and Hives website is is what the going rate is there. Yeah, MSRP you might be able to find it cheaper elsewhere, but yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, a, a cool, cool little, little piece. And so think about that for Father's Day next year. Yeah. Go ahead and get it now before they run out. That's right. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. Back on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 123, our midweek supplemental episode of the, the podcast. Uh, Bob gets a chance to, uh, go little deeper into uh, his state of the collection, what he's got, what he's got coming, those type of things. Uh, but right now, he's not really talking about any knives in his possession, but yet they are in his, air quote, possession. They're not his, they're borrowed. <laughs> yes, I, they're not in my collection, but they are ah, in my possession. Yes. There you go, I like that better, yeah. Yeah, so I got my second pass-around knife, and, and uh, the first pass-around knife I got was really cool. It was the little Finch Runtley, that little uh, Warncliffe flipper. And I had it for a week and a half and, and I hadn't made my video of it yet. And I was growing kind of attached to the, the, the thing. And I was like, this is cool, man. I don't, you know, I got to send it off. Don't get too attached. And then I get an email saying, hey, you, you were the last person in the pass around group to get this. And we did a drawing and you won the knife. Oh, and I was so excited. Yeah. I was like, here, I got this little knife, I got attached, and I want it, it's mine. Well, the second one came, and I'm growing attached, and, and I'm realizing as I'm, I'm, I'm growing to the end of my stay with this knife, or vice versa, that the chances are very slim that right. I'm going to win again. And damn it, I've grown attached to this knife, it's beautiful. This is the Civivi Rustic Gent. Oh my gosh, man. It's, it's a little, I mean, this, I see this as up your alley, Jim, as you are a gent. It's about a three-inch bladed lockback clip point in the tradition, say, of just in the tradition of the Buck 112 Ranger, kind of the mm -hmm. same overall size. Size, okay. But but much smaller in, in all dimensions, including uh, – what I mean by that is it's it's way less bulky. It's way lighter. Okay, and it's I was going to say a, way lighter. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, but so this knife is, uh, is a bolstered um, lockback clip point. With carbon fiber at the bolster and beautiful carbon fiber. You know, I'm not a huge fan, but I love this. And uh, the rest of the handle is this beautiful burlap micarta. And then the blade itself, which is super thin and slice slicey like the other Civivi I, I actually own, is in Damasteel. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful knife, man. I love this thing. 
And then it comes in a leather slip joint with a pocket clip. So it doesn't have to rattle around at the base of your pocket and go sideways and, and be uncomfortable. It can sit at the top of your pocket in the same orientation that you carry all your other knives, just in a little pouch. Mm -hmm. um, so it is classy as, uh, as can be. And it's made by Civivi, which is the, well, we're calling it the budget brand of Wii, but man, they, I've heard someone recently say, and now, now I can't remember who, uh, but it's more like Wii is the upscale brand of Civivi because Civivi is just <laughs> knocking it out of the park. And this thing is great. So yeah, uh, long and short of it is I got another pass around knife and I've grown attached, but this one I know I'm going to have to <sighs> send back out. Away, yeah. <laughs> You yeah. better get that video done quick. I know, I know. Otherwise, it might... Oh, I can't send it until I, I've done this interview. Well, you can look for that uh, video whenever it is available on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Again, the Civivi Rustic Gent. And looks like uh, suggested, manufactured, suggested retail price around the $75 uh, mark. So, uh, not uh, terribly expensive for such mm -hmm. a great-looking little knife as well. Yep. Um. Your impressions, Bob, talking about borrowed knives or knives not in your collection, but in your possession. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Uh, a couple of knives that uh, YouTube friend Dirk Warning sent you to uh, take a look at. Yep. High-end custom direwear and a rare Medford. So uh, which one do you want to tackle first? Well, I, I, let's tackle Dirk Warning first. Oh, okay. Dirk has a... A relatively new channel, but uh, uh, on YouTube, crushing it though. But he is crushing it. He's he's on the upward ascent. Uh, we had him on Thursday Night Knives a few weeks back, and and uh, he's just been kind of a friend of the show, introduced to us through Alex, uh, Alex Deso of Alex's Knife Box. They're buddies. They're both uh, collectors of very high end knives, and uh, uh, I was drooling over Dirk's uh, Direware solo in one of his videos. He did a video of a borrowed Direware. And compared it to his. Uh, if you're not familiar with Direware, it's a custom knife company, and I know very little bit. I know very little about them, except mm. I think they're beautiful. And I, I've, I've reached out to them. I'd love to have them on the podcast and find out more about them. But they create these incredible, o overbuilt tactical knives. Uh, my daughter took a look at this, and she said the first thing she said, and it came right out of her mouth, was, "It looks like an orca." And yeah, this uh, the solo that I'm the shark. Uh, no, the the oh, killer the whale. Oh, the, the whale, whale, yeah, yeah. whale. Yeah, so I, I'm really, really um, kind of blown away by two things. First of all, that Dirk Werning doesn't know me from a hill of beans, except uh, <laughs> except on the podcast and on the website, sent me uh, this knife and another, and they are very, very expensive and beautiful custom pieces, and and uh, that is impressive. And then I am also just blown away by the workmanship of this of this direware it is uh um people just have to look it up direware solo i think this is a five it's with a recurve uh tanto blade it locks in the hand like a knuckle duster and but it's beautiful and refined and uh ha, god it's making me feel like oh i need to start investigating this realm of the knife world but uh but this is how I can investigate it right now with good friends like Dirk who can <laughs> right. who can send me something. So I, I'm going to offer to send him uh, something of my collection uh, that he can do reviews on. Right. Uh, the other knife he sent me was this Medford Viper, which is oh my god! It it is a uh, it is a giant uh, raven looking raven like knife. That uh, my first reaction to this was um, to swing it around. It is. It's got a blade that is sort of worn cliffy with a with a light belly that uh, angles forward in your hand. So it's very aggressive already. It's already cutting something before your hand gets there. And it's got this beautifully curved handle that fits nicely uh, in hand. It's, it's, it's somewhat neutral. And to look at it, I, I got to be honest, I've said this before about Medford's. Uh, you know, I'd look at them and be like, God, that's an awkward design or... Or straight up ugly, and then I get them in hand. I'm, I I can't believe what I'm holding. Uh, so this this thing, uh, I'm gonna make a review of it and uh, uh, put it up, show it off on on the channel. But something I uh, the the really unique thing about this knife, this Medford, is that it's a folder, and the blade is a quarter inch thick, a wow. quarter inch thick, like like it's a like it like it's an outdoor like it's a survival knife, you know, it's a slab like, of meat. <laughs> oh my good gravy! And then. Uh, 
And then the whole thing is like 0.9 inches thick. It's almost an inch thick. But I'll, I'll be damned if it doesn't feel incredible in hand. It's also 12 ounces, I think. <laughs> Just kind of works for you. Yeah, it works for me. So, Dirk, um, thank you. And uh, if you weren't so cool. You'll be getting your knives <laughs> back sometime. Yeah. Well, he said, take your time. And I can't take my time. That's the thing. Uh, this week, I'm, I'm going to get them back out to you because if I take take my time with this, I'm, I just might get too comfortable. Well, those videos, again, forthcoming on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Be sure to uh, subscribe and click the bell notification so you don't miss any of his uh, new knife review videos, Thursday Night Knives, any of the kind of good stuff that uh, Bob has on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. Well, Jim, before we wrap and, and close out this uh, supplemental, I just... I have one more uh, little bit of news, and it's not much news at all. But I'm oh, sending okay. out two Emersons. I wanted to tell you about this. Uh, two Emersons for, you know, aftermarket tricking. Uh, the first one, I'm sending my um, sax to Jared Neve of Neve's Knives. Uh, great channel uh, on YouTube uh, with his wife, Kara. And he's also been a guest on the show uh, on Thursday Night Knives. He is a hand sharpener. And uh, does a beautiful job. He learned a lot from Mike Emler. People might know Mike Emler. And uh, he, uh, a forthcoming guest on the show, by the way. Uh, so I'm sending him my sacks to A, rehab the tip. Because as you know, if it's a worn cliff, I drop it on the tip. He's going to rehab the tip and, and make that chisel uh, uh, chisel edge even even more wicked sharp. I'm looking forward to getting that. And that will all be done by hand on stones, which I'm excited for. And then I'm sending out my uh, my beloved old CQC-13 uh, Emerson, that's the Bowie, the first Bowie I think he made, to uh, Knives and Such on Instagram. And, and he's a, a, a guy who makes beautiful micarta handles and other types of handles uh, for Emersons and other knives. But uh, uh, the, Emerson, the Emerson work he's done, and I know he does D ZT, really drew me in. Mm -hmm. And it's not everyone who can who can make handle scales and make them on both sides and then make them fit right. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be here. A little spoiler, natural canvas, my Carta. Oh, love it. Really? Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody knows that about yeah. you by now. Oh, there we go. Okay. Bob, you mentioned Mike Embler. You, you kind of gave it away. He's coming up uh, actually this coming Sunday, episode yep. number 124. Had a chance to uh, catch up with Mike, so podcast uh, next Sunday with him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, sharpening guru and uh, also designer of the uh, of the Wee Knife Stonefish and the new up-and-coming artisan sea snake. And that's a Warncliffe uh, fixed blade EDC in a new steel, proprietary mm. steel. So. New steel. All yeah. right. Well, that's about going to wrap it up for this edition of the podcast. I do want to remind you to join us tomorrow night if you're listening to this podcast when it first comes out on Wednesday. Uh, join us tomorrow, Thursday night, for Thursday Night Knives. We've kind of mentioned it uh, before this episode, uh, during this episode, and before this episode as well. But Thursday Night Knives is the live video show every Thursday night at 10 o'clock Eastern time, where Bob has a chance to uh, have special guests on and uh, uh, talk, interview, look at knives. Also, you have the opportunity to jump in and uh, converse with Bob as well as the special guests. So if you're listening to this podcast, Thursday Night Knives is tomorrow. If you're uh, listening any other day of the week, well, the next one's coming up next Thursday. <laughs> it's every week, Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern. So uh, we look forward to, to seeing you there. Thanks to everyone who shows up every week. We really appreciate it. And thanks to new people who show up every week. And of course, the super chatters. You guys yeah. rock. Absolutely. Yeah, and if you're finding value in Thursday Night Knives or this podcast, do us a favor. Uh, it won't cost you a penny. Share it with a friend. Send them an email, shoot them an Instagram message, a direct message, uh, you know, share it in a Facebook group, whatever. Let them know about the Knife Junkie podcast, Thursday Night Knives, and we would certainly appreciate that assistance. So for Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person over here, saying thanks for joining us on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. 